Yo, what's going on, guys? It's good to be back. I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded. I've been super busy with school and stuff, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into the grind of things starting up pretty soon here. And I thought I would start that by talking about something that just came out recently, which is the Fallout TV show. Now, if you don't know me super in depth and this is your first time on the channel, I am a massive Fallout fan. I love Fallout. Fallout is one of my favorites, and one of my dream projects on this channel is to make a complete Fallout series retrospective where I go over all of the Fallout games. And so I was pretty anticipated for this show, but I can't lie, I was also a bit worried. Fallout is a world that is very tonally weird. It's very unforgiving, it's very dry, it's very clever, and I think the tone of that world is very hard to translate into live action. I think a lot of ways it could be done, you could either go way too cynical with it or way too preachy with it and try to make it something it's not. However, after having binged all eight episodes of the series on Amazon, I am happy to report that this show does none of that. It perfectly encapsulates what's so interesting about this world. It gives us new characters to care about. It gives us new lore to discuss until the next season comes out or the next game is released. And it really pays a lot of loving homage to this series and the fans of this series. Let's start by talking about the good. Firstly, I loved all of the performances. Everyone from the top of the cast to the bottom of the cast is giving the performance of a career here, honestly. Ella Purnell, who I'd never seen before, or my fiance loved in the show Yellow Jackets is just absolutely amazing as Lucy McLean here. Lucy kind of serves as our player character in the show. She's clearly the main protagonist and sort of a new person's window into this world. Lucy has spent her entire life living in Vault 33 in the comfort and safety of a vault and is now leaving the vault and entering the wasteland for the first time to search for her missing father played by Kyle MacLachlan. Now, I'm a big Kyle MacLachlan fan. I've mentioned on this channel before that one of my favorite TV shows is How I Met Your Mother and Kyle Kyle McLaughlin plays a character in that show called The Captain, and that character is very funny. So I'm always happy to see Kyle McLaughlin pop up and stuff. Also, he was the original Paul Atreides in David Lynch's Dune, so there's that. So I'm always happy to see Kyle McLaughlin get paid, and he's great as the father. You uncover a lot of secrets about the father as the show goes on, and uh, I won't get into spoilers about that quite yet, but I think it's really cool, and I think he plays uh, that character with a lot of depth. And it's interesting because there's not a lot on the page for him, at least in this season, and I think he adds a lot to that character that might have gone under the radar with a lot of other actors, so good to see Kyle MacLachlan. The rest of our cast is filled out by Aaron Moten and Walton Goggins. Aaron Moten plays Maximus, who is a lower on the totem pole member of the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, he just wants to make the world a better place. He's got a heart of gold and he really wants to improve the wasteland. And I think it's interesting to watch that person grow. It reminds me a bit of Finn from Star Wars, uh, the sequel trilogy, but hopefully they don't butcher Maximus's arc. And I think the way they leave Maximus off in this series is awesome and I'm so excited to see where it goes. This is a character that wants nothing more than to make the wasteland a better place, but also he has the internal conflict of wanting somewhere to belong. And I think it's really interesting when you put somebody like that into a system like the Brotherhood of Steel. I think it makes for a really fun way to examine an organization like the Brotherhood of Steel. So I think A plus to the writing department on his character arc. And then Walton Goggins is just unbelievable. First of all, Walton Goggins is just the man. All right, this guy is just so good in everything. And I'm so happy to see him getting this love on my Twitter timeline. I love Walton Goggins. And I'm so happy that the rest of the world is being introduced to what a real talent this guy is. So Walton Goggins is sort of our window into the before times. Mild spoilers for like the first five minutes of the pilot, but the show opens with Walton Goggins' character and his daughter about five minutes before the nukes drop in California. And I think it's such a cool way to open this show. It's a really heartfelt way. And then as the series goes on, we get more stories about him and his family, how he relates to vault Tech, And then also he is there in the wasteland 200 years later with Lucy, with Maximus going on a journey not with them, but in tandem with them. They're all searching for one MacGuffin that I will not spoil. It's really cool to see these three stories of the Brotherhood of Steel guy, the Vault Dweller, and now the ghoul who was there in the before times and is now here 200 years later after the nukes dropped. And so we get all these different perspectives on the wasteland. We get somebody who was born in it. We get somebody who was born before it and existed through all of it. And we get somebody who's getting introduced to it for the first time. And it's cool to watch all of these different perspectives 
fuel each other in different unique ways, and I think that's really fun. Um, also, all of the vault dwellers of Vault 33 are just awesome. A lot of them are people you've seen in comedy movies or in TV shows before. I think it's really smart to get comedic actors to play this super hyper satirical, cynical vault scenarios. I think that's really fun. And also, there's a lot of mysteries going on inside the vault, and I think it's paced so perfectly to just give you enough to keep you interested, while also giving you enough to keep you relieved comedically, and I think none of it was overdone, and I think it was all done in a really smart way. The vault dweller I want to give the biggest shout out to is Mose Arias, who you might know as Rico from Hannah Montana. He does a turn here playing Norm McLean, uh, Lucy's brother and the son of the missing overseer, and uh, he really gives the vault side of the story a lot of heart that it might otherwise not have, and I think that's really neat. Now I want to talk about the stuff I'm not as high on, and to do that, I think I'm going to need to get into spoilers. Nothing is bad, so in short, if you don't want any spoilers and you haven't watched it yet, just know that I think this show is absolutely worth watching, regardless of your experience with the Fallout universe. Uh, I think it's an absolute achievement that they were able to capture the tone this well and make it palatable enough for newcomers that aren't familiar with the games or with the deep lore that the franchise has. So yeah, in short, watch it. Now for the spoilers. First things first, I didn't love how they tackled the vault tech side of the story. I thought it was super interesting, and as a fan, I was very engaged, but I think holding off the reveal that each vault is like an experiment until the end of the series is a bit of a head scratcher, because that's so intrinsic to the lore of Fallout that I'm not sure if you don't have that information, you're in the right headspace to understand the rest of the show. Now, I watched this entire show with my fiance this weekend, and she surprisingly, and not because she's dumb, she's actually a very smart person, but she surprisingly was able to keep up with everything that was going on. So maybe I'm overthinking this aspect of it. But I feel like part of the reason she was able to keep going was because she had me answering questions about like what the Brotherhood of Steel was, what vault Tech is, without trying to give away too much, Right? And I wonder if somebody with absolutely zero experience or nobody with experience watching with them will be able to fully appreciate this show and what it has on offer. And the vault tech side of the story is where I noticed it being the biggest problem. Uh, because I think in order to understand all of the before time stuff with Walton Goggins, I think you need a bit of an understanding of what vault tech is and their role in the universe. And it's not given to you until very close to the end. In an awesome scene, might I add, with Mr. House, are you fucking kidding me? Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, that was so cool. There's that scene with, at the boardroom with Robotech CEO and the CEOs of Vault Tech and the CEOs of all these different companies and you see Mr. House, which was just, oh man, I exploded. But they don't tell the audience, the new audience at least, about how bad Vault Tech is until that scene. They take the approach of showing us it through Walton Goggin's character's eyes, which I think is neat, and I think it leads to more intrigue, but I think it is doing a disservice to the audience that isn't familiar with the lore, in my opinion. Now, if you aren't familiar with the lore and you watched this whole show and had no problems, please leave a comment letting me know, because maybe I'm completely wrong on this. That's just one of the things I noticed that I wasn't super hot on. I also wasn't super hot on the developments they made with the Brotherhood. I don't like where they went with the Brotherhood of Steel in this show. I don't like that the Brotherhood of Steel is kind of like a bumbling organization full of idiots. And I know that in the games they're kind of like that, but I don't like how dumb they are, <laughs> like, to be honest. You'd think that an organization with this much pedigree and this much power and the power armor and all that stuff, you would think that they would be more involved in what's going on when they're trying to chase an artifact of infinite power. You'd think they'd be more invested in this and that they'd send more than one knight, and when that knight's communication breaks off, they just send one dude to go help him. I don't buy in to how unaware they are. I don't, I just don't buy that. Uh, again, not a huge issue uh, because I think it worked for telling the story of these characters and I'm always a fan of character before plot, but in this particular situation, I wasn't the biggest fan of how the Brotherhood of Seal was handled. I think they seem like an organization of bumbling idiots, which is part of what they are, but they also have a lot of power. And I think that power needs to be exemplified in a way that it wasn't until the very last episode. Now let's talk about the finale because the finale is the high point of this show and they're really betting on a season two and man, am I excited. Man, oh man, am I stoked. So a few things. One, I mentioned it already, but in that finale, we get Mr. House, 
which is just like, come on. I mean, he doesn't say much. He doesn't do much, but like that mustache, that face, it's Mr. House. Come on. So that was really cool. It was awesome to see that New Vegas love. And speaking of New Vegas love, when Hank McLean at the end in that power armor, there's that shot of the New Vegas strip. I mean, I almost exploded. My fiance didn't understand what was going on, but me as a Fallout fan, I, I got goosebumps. I started smiling. I was like, Oh, yeah, we're going to the fucking Mojave, baby. We're going to the Mojave. I, I can't, I can't express in words how cool that was to me as someone who's played Fallout New Vegas for 10 years now, right? Since I was a little kid, I remember getting it on my PS3, playing the ever-living shit out of it, not understanding what was going on at all. And just to see that shot of the New Vegas strip was just, oh, it made me want to start a fresh playthrough of New Vegas right now, and I think I'm gonna. I think, I think I'm gonna do a fresh playthrough of 3 and New Vegas. Just to see that made me so happy. And to see it done so well, Oh, it makes me so excited for where season two is going. I cannot wait to see what a live action representation of the Mojave is. Will we get to see Good Springs? Will we get to see all of these iconic locations from New Vegas? Are we going to spend a lot of time there? Oh man, I'm just so curious to see where they're going with all of this. On top of that, to see the lore developments with how Shady Springs blew up, I think that's really neat. I think it's unfortunate that a location like Shady Springs that's so iconic in uh, Fallout 2 get wiped off the map like that, but I do think that the reasoning they went with that and the way they led up to it and the way they explained it was really cool. And honestly, just to wrap it all up, I'm just really excited to see the future of this TV show. I started off going into this show with a bit of skepticism, a bit of fright, a bit of fear that they're going to screw it up and not give the best representation of this world to people in my life that are never going to play the games, but will watch the show. And I'm just really happy that they didn't. I'm really happy that they were very true to the core and essence of the games while also evolving the story of the games in a way that's meaningful and impactful. And so, yeah, overall, the Fallout show is great. I'm going to give it a four out of four. I loved it. I really, really loved it. And I cannot wait to see where they go and where season two goes. I think they set themselves up perfectly with the ending of where the characters are. Now we're going to get Lucy and uh, Walton Goggins go on like a little adventure, maybe hit the Mojave, maybe see Good Springs, maybe see the Strip, maybe meet Mr. House in live action. I think Maximus's character is left in a super interesting place, like, a, like an unbelievably interesting place in terms of he's all he's wanted his entire life is this to help the wasteland and have the power to do that. And now he has it but he also wants a place to belong, and he also wants love, and I think it's really interesting to see that character be examined. So yeah, Fallout TV show, go watch it. Um, if you got this far in the video, you probably have. Sorry for the long delay, but thank you for watching this video, and I'll be back soon. Peace.